What is going on guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl Wi-Fi battle. Today I've got a really fun match here. I'm using a team that I used a little while back just because these dudes are fun and I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm bringing them back. Looking at my opponent's team, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit scared. There's, you know, some pretty tough Pokemon over there. They've got the Garchomp. Uh, there's mons like the Milotic, Arcanine, Slacking is always a, a force to be reckoned with. It's really hard to switch into. Uh, but overall, it's looking like it's going to be a pretty good matchup here. As always, if you guys could leave a like on the video, it really helps out the channel. And I do appreciate all your guys' support. Uh, also, before we hop into the match here, I want to let you guys know I did actually forget to press start recording uh, for like the first few turns of this match. But, you know, again, I've said this before. Luckily, we have technology. So let's just jump into it. So I'm going to go ahead and lead off with everybody's favorite Satan Cotton Balls, the, <laughs> the jump bluff here as they end up leading off with Bronze on. Uh, this allows me to get a nice little sleep powder and then I'm like, you know what, I'm going to switch the hell out of here. I decided to go into Weezing. Uh, it's a good opportunity for me to kind of set up some poison spikes here as they don't have any poison types or hazard control. Uh, then this allows me to hit it with a flamethrower. It actually ends up waking up, goes for a reflect, and then decides to switch into Milotic on the incoming flamethrower. I decide to stay in and go for a sludge bomb, get some nice damage off on this thing as it fires back a scald in return. Um, I'm then going to end up switching back into jump pluff on the incoming scald. He absolutely eats that up and then I go for an energy ball really expecting a kill but it lives with literally one HP and then hits me with an ice beam and that right there is a dead ass jump pluff. Uh, luckily the Melotic does die to the poison damage and then we have an empty battlefield as I decide to go into Persian. Now this is a choice specs Persian, I decide to go for the switcheroo, I'm like, hey yo, hold this for me real quick player. Because uh, I expect him to go for the swords dance as it actually does so I get the prediction correct and boom, we are back in HD. <laughs> so I've successfully gone with the switcheroo, got this, uh, this Garchomp here with the choice specs which is amazing. I honestly really love using this Persian, uh, it's always a good time. But now that I've got this fella wearing my glasses looking stylish, I'm expecting a switch and I kind of expect the Bronzong to come in here. I decided to go into the Tooth Fairy here because I figure it'd, pretty, it'd be a pretty decent mon to set up on. Uh, but they actually end up going Luxray, which is not ideal. But at least I got that Garchomp with the choice specs because now it's a lot easier to, to play around a Garchomp that doesn't have access uh, to that Swords Dance and I can kind of just really, really play around it a lot easier. So. Uh, Luxray comes in, he's looking a little pointy, so I'm scared and intimidated, but Tooth Fairy's like, you know what, I'm not even that scared, although you might have, I, I can't really hurt you, so I'm actually going to end up switching out the Mawile as I really have nothing to do to a damn Luxray, uh, but shout out to this dude for using Luxray, we love to, we love to see the representation, uh, but I do have a Steelix on my squad, and even if he does have the elemental fight fangs or whatever, I, I can take that easily as this fella is an absolute unit, you see the size of my gold chain, am I here flexing? Uh, super bulky as it does end up going for that fire fang. So, you know, it does a little bit of a chunk, but it's really not too big of a deal. And I'm actually kind of seeing a little bit of an opening here uh, with the Steelix against their team. If I can successfully get some curses up, I know that I can take pretty much an attack from everything as the Reflect does wear off there. Uh, this is also a good time for me to set up my Stealth Rock. I would like to get the Hazards up. They have Mons like the Arcanine. Things you just don't want to switch into Stealth Rock and just kind of help me you know, punish some switches a little bit as they end up going back into the Bronzong. And this kind of tells me that they really want that Reflect up, especially against a physical attacker like Steelix. But honestly, it's really not the end of the world because this is kind of nice for me to be able to freely set up my Curses. So... I decide it's time to just, just bust out the Sailor Mouth and just start cursing up a storm over here. The main reason I'm able to do this is mostly because I was able to take care of that Milotic early, which kind of just opens the door for Steelix here. So, uh, they do set up another Reflect, and I'm actually not sure if this thing is Light Clay. I assume it is if it's a dual screens Bronzong, but I get that clean plus one attack and plus one defense. Uh, not like my dude needs the defense, but if I can get a couple of those, I know for sure I can take... Uh, an Earthquake from the Garchomp, and then potentially even knock it out with uh, with a Gyro Ball, regardless of the Reflect. So they're going to end up switching out here. They decide to go right into the Garchomp. They're like, all right, I got to get this dude in here quick. He really wants to show off these, these nice little choice specs he's got. How cool would it be if Pokemon actually showed the items that they were holding? It would be kind of fun. But I go for another Curse on the Switch, and now I'm sitting at a nice plus two, a nice comfortable plus two over here. The good news is, I know at this point I can easily take an Earthquake from this Garchomp, plus it does not have the ability to bust out his swords because of uh, my choice specs. So, at full health, I'm, I'm thinking I'm honestly probably going to take like 30% from an Earthquake from this thing, and I'm like, you know what? I'm getting greedy out here, boy. 
I'm gold. I don't give a shit. I'm going for another curse. All right, so it does go for that EQ, and Steelix is like, hey, did you touch me? I, I hardly felt that. I mean, it did a little bit of a chunk, but after this next curse, I can take like two more, and the main reason why I'm trying to set this thing up as much as possible is because I know uh, that they do have double Intimidate Mons with the Arcanine or the Luxray, but if they decide to switch into those, they are going to have to basically sack something. So after some leftover recovery, I'm looking good. We're eating well out here, feeling thick. And uh, the Toxic is kind of kind of doing its thing. I was only able to get one layer of the Toxic Spike. So um, it's still at least a little bit of chip damage. As now I decide, all right, it's enough shenanigans. I'm just going to go for the attacking move. Earthquake knocks me to about half. And at this point, I'm loving Steelix. This is a prime example of being able to knock out a Pokemon's counter on the other team and then really taking advantage of that. Without that Milo take around, uh, Steelix is just being an absolute bully out here. So down goes the Garchomp, the biggest threat out of the way. And Steelix is feeling good, near half HP, and I'm thinking I could probably take uh, an attack regardless because I know most of, uh, I think all of their, rest of their Pokemon are physical attackers. So, uh, in comes Luxray. It is going to take some Stealth Rock damage, but also intimidate me, so knocks me down to uh, plus two. But even with that Reflect Up, nothing is going to really want to take uh, an attack here. So I just go for the Earthquake because it hits the Arcanine, it hits the Luxray. Uh, they are going to actually end up switching out the Luxray. I guess they just wanted to send that thing in mainly just for uh, the Intimidate support, and they decide to go into slacking so shiny slacking with his orange nose is the only thing about him <laughs> why didn't they fucking keep the the pink the pink from my uh, slack off a great shiny and then they're like you know what no no orange nose when it fully evolves but uh, earthquake obviously doesn't hurt this thing too much with that reflect you know it's it's gonna knock it to about half after this poison damage but steelix is not done yet bro i can take an attack from this thing depending on what uh, it is working with. It could potentially be Choice Bandit. Bandit Earthquake could do a lot, but I am max HP, I believe, on this thing, so I, I, I take that nicely. Uh, and that's probably the least amount of damage I've ever seen anything take from a slacking, so Steelix has really earned earned his, uh, his leftovers today. So, take care of the slacking. Down goes another huge threat. That's a Pokemon that really has, like, nothing you can switch into it. Unless, you know, you're a Steelix with a whole bunch of curses up. So... Uh, now they bring in their second Intimidate, and Steelix is like, alright, I'm actually getting a little intimidated out here. There's not, you know, a whole lot I can do. I'm at, uh, still gonna be sitting at plus one, uh, but at the health I'm at, I'm kind of wondering, depending on what kind of Arcanine this is, if I'm gonna be able to, uh, take an attack. The cool thing about Arcanine is it can run a whole bunch of different shit. It could be physical, it could be special, it could be defensive support, uh, but it does show me it is gonna be Flare Blitz, and it's actually Life Orb, so that is gonna be able to take care of Steelix. But not before I was able to absolutely poke a gaping hole in this man's squad. Pause. But uh, it takes some recoil damage, it takes some life warp damage, and then it takes some poison damage. So Pupper over here really just paid the price for that one. And Steelix is like, all right, I've pretty much done my job. And at this point, I can just go into the, <laughs> the Puthy, uh, who actually happens to be probably the wettest Puthy on the internet. Uh, as I actually, I do have the Water Pulse. Uh, it's always satisfying to get Special Attacking Persian to do some stuff, so I just throw some water at you, and the cat beats the dog today. How do you like that? Also very satisfying. Uh, but Arcanine goes down. A uh, pretty large threat out of the way, but with Stealth Rock and Poison and Recoil, it wasn't going to hang around for too much longer anyway. Uh, but now I'm actually excited to see if I can get Persian to, to work his magic here. So in comes the Luxray, and Persian's like, how many times do I got to teach you all this lesson? You do not fuck with Persian. I just I, I keep bringing this thing back. Uh, because it's super fun. This is actually the first time I was able to get Switcheroo to work, but um, I basically just decided to go for the Hyper Beam here because I wanted to just hit something with Hyper Beam, uh, but it's actually faster. It goes for the Wild Charge, shows me it's a Choice Scarf Luxray, but I live because Persian is an absolute legend, and then I fire back a Hyper Beam. Probably like the first time in recent memory I've used, used Hyper Beam in a Wi-Fi battle, but look at that animation. Literally nothing is living that. They, they really went off when it comes to <laughs> Hyper Beam animation. Uh, so that takes care of Luxray, and we're we're getting right down to it. He's got the, uh, I believe, just the Bronzong left. Uh, so I do have to obviously recharge the Persian here. When the when the pussy's got to recharge, uh, I don't know. The, there's a your mom joke in there somewhere or something. I don't know. But I recharge here. It is just going to knock me out with a flash cannon, and that is totally fine because I've saved some threats in the back. And plus, this bell is not going anywhere, as I do still have a uh, choice banded. Quagsire, freaking Mawile has not gotten to do much, but I'm determined 
There's actually a couple different options I can run with that thing, so I'm going to mess around with Mawile some more. Uh, but I decided to go into Quagsire, Now this is going to be my choice banded Quagsire that I've been using a little bit lately. Uh, I go for the Waterfall, and this thing's probably defensive, but also... Like, you can't, you can't touch Quagsire. Also, I still need to give a nickname to this damn Quagsire. For some reason, the nickname didn't work. I tried to, I don't know. But Flesh Cannon does not even scratch me. And one more Waterfall is going to do the trick. So I thought that was a pretty interesting battle, regardless of forgetting to click recording, yeah, like halfway through it. I mean, not even halfway, but <laughs> I was like, you know what? I'm still uploading it. Fuck it. Let me go. Let me know what you guys thought. Uh, as always, I do appreciate you guys very much. Leave a comment on the video. Potentially let me know what kind of sets, if there's any Pokemon in specific you'd like to see me use, because I will probably get around to it. All right. Peace out.